Several weeks ago, Do Kwon, who is the creator of Terraform Labs, the creator of the Terra Luna ecosystem, and also the UST stablecoin that had since collapsed, is under extreme legal pressure right now. In this video, I'm going to tell you who is suing him, what other country is holding him, and what the price of Luna 2 their attempted remake is actually worth right now, being that he, the venture capital companies, and several others are now being sued for the crash of UST and Terra Luna. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what they're facing and what that could mean for the crypto world. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. Right now on this channel, we are covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, but I'm also covering cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the Late Night Grind YouTube channel. Also, if you do a couple of things, I'd really appreciate it. Smash the thumbs up button, watch this video all the way to the end. If you do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, let's jump into it. Okay, so several weeks ago, you may remember, there was a stable coin known as UST that lost its peg to the US dollar and crashed. And at the same time, Terra Luna also crashed, going from over $120 to down below a dollar and then down below one cent, and then finally being scrapped altogether. So since that happened, there was a lot of people that are very, very upset. And joining that party is someone by the name of Nick Patterson. He is actually suing Terraform Labs, which includes Doquan. He is also suing Three Arrows Capital, Jump Crypto, as well as Definance Capital, Republic Capital, and the Terraform head of research, Nicholas Piatas. Now, the lawsuit alleges that basically what they were doing was covering up uh, what was essentially amounted to a scam, but really the reason they're going after these companies is because they are saying that these venture capital companies, Do Kwon and a few other people, basically made false statements about Terra Luna UST in order to get investors to pump more money into the Luna, into the Terra Luna ecosystem, as well as use the UST stablecoin. The lawsuit alleges they were doing this in order to get investors to buy in at inflated prices. The lawsuit also states that Terraform Labs gave a false impression about the stability of the UST stablecoin. I remember that crashed, lost its peg to the US dollar. It's also naming several other venture capitals uh, in this lawsuit. And it's going after those companies because among other things, he is claiming that those companies actually made false statements about not only the stability of UST, the stablecoin, but about the reserves that these venture capital companies had to back up the reserve, to back up Terra Luna and UST in case of a crash. As we all know now, that was not there, or at least not nearly enough. But the statements they were making at the time made it look like it was, hence this lawsuit. Now the lawsuit alleges that the Terraform Labs and those involved in this basically conned investors by not registering the Terra Luna token as well as the UST stablecoin with the US Securities and Exchange. Now, if you follow this channel, even following the Ripple versus the SEC case, that is what that case is all about. So there is a lot of gray areas regarding cryptocurrencies and securities. Are they securities? Are they not securities? And it could be determined on a case by case basis because if you follow this channel, it is largely seen that uh, that XRP, of course, is not a security if you really do, if you really do the deep dive However, something like Terra Luna, uh, when you have the promoter, when you have the actual creators and the venture capitals uh, companies behind the creators mentioning things, that could be taken as statements to get investors or others to actually buy into the Terra Luna ecosystem, as well as UST stablecoin, well, they actually might have a case here. So what other good news is actually going on for Terra Luna? Well, South Korea actually is detaining most of them. In fact, the Terraform Labs employees realized that they were not allowed to leave the country until they actually tried to. So Terraform Labs employees are basically in South Korea and they are not allowed to leave. That includes Do Kwon. And they are also facing an $80 million fine for tax evasion purposes. At least that's what the country of South Korea is claiming. So Nick Patterson, who, like I said, is authoring this lawsuit against Terraform Labs and the venture capitalist firms, what's he actually seeking? He's going after everything he possibly can get his hands on. So as it states, he's seeking all actual, general, special, incidental, statutory, rescission, punitive, and consequential, and consequential damages. Basically anything he can get his hands on, he is going after in this case, and he might get it. The question is, what's the jurisdiction? Because everything's located in South Korea, and Nick Patterson's located in Illinois in the United States. What's the jurisdiction for going after this? And that might, and your answer might be, well, all the venture capital companies that have been in some way, shape, or form backing Terra Luna, well, they may have a fight on their hands depending on what country they are located in. So Do Kwon, who's the creator of Terraform Labs, has largely been off of social media ever since a lot of this went down. 
they did come up with something that they called Luna 2, which was basically a replacement for the Terra Luna ecosystem that crashed. This went back up on exchanges. In fact, it went up very quickly. So has it been trading and is it worth anything right now? Well, as of today, I just checked and it's basically mirror every, it's basically mirroring what a lot of the other altcoins are doing right now, which is basically following Bitcoin. It's not doing anything catastrophic. Although when some of this news continues to come out, especially the news that South Korea is detaining, and holding Terra Luna employees. I'm not sure it should be part of a long-term investment strategy, although it looks like plenty of people are still day trading it. So this was just breaking earlier today and I wanted to make a video about it because it's something that affects the rest of the ecosystem, the rest of the cryptocurrency world. And as of right now, it is basically just a byline uh, on some of the websites that I visit. But if you wanna stay informed on what is happening with this case, because in my opinion, this could be one of the biggest cases that affects some of the regulation, specifically in the United States, well, you're gonna to wanna to follow along and see what United States regulators have to say about this. Because as Ron Hammond, who is the director of Blockchain Association's uh, government relations, as he has been talking about, this is on the eye of many regulators. Now, of course, Gary Gensler and the rest of the SEC, well, they have people doing their job for them by saying, listen, if you see something wrong, come to the SEC. Well, this person isn't exactly going to the SEC. They're attempting to handle this by themselves. And maybe they have to, because since Terra Luna is not located in the United States, this is something that I'm gonna keep an eye on to see what happens to not only Doquan, but Terra Luna, some of the crypto world, and specifically some of the regulations that are coming into place. So if you wanna follow along, make sure you subscribe to the Late Night Grind YouTube channel. Also, you can follow me on Twitter. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end for smashing that thumbs up button. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.